Right, we're off on another astronomical adventure. And what we've got here is in fact a magnetic hologram of one of Jupiter's moons. And in fact, the one which is of most interest to astronomers, it's Europa, the one where they think there is life. Now, it's difficult to imagine, but there are a number of canes here which go around in a circle. And these are indicating the sort of the equator of the moon, if you like, bigger circle. I didn't have a hula hoop which would fit it big enough to do it. But you can imagine that this is the equator of the moon and over the poles, if you like, there's going to be the North Pole and way down here is going to be the South Pole of the moon. So if you can sort of stretch your imagination and imagine this big ball here, which is a magnetic hologram representing Europa and all the information that Europa contains. What we're after is some of that information. Now, what we do is by using uh, the magnetic fields, we're able to analyze for the different things which are in the moon. So if we actually start at the top, around the North Pole, so to speak, we can pick up the icy layer, then below it the watery layer, then we come to the granite uh, core, and inside that granite core there is in fact an inner core which is the iron and the uh, nickel uh, core right at the center there. Now sometime in the past of course all of this was liquid and gravity, being gravity, is going to pull all the heavy stuff to the uh, center. So when we start analyzing the center we find the gold and the iridium and the other heavy elements stuck in there. But interestingly, of course, one of the heavy elements which is going to go there is the uranium, the radioactive uranium. And so you're going to have this core with a fairly high concentration of radiation, radioactive material, and it's going to produce heat. And that's going to ensure that for a while this remains uh, molten, but it's also going to ensure that heat is flowing out. And that heat, thinking of this as the core, that heat is going to go up and it's going to keep this watery ocean, vast watery ocean, it's going to keep it liquid. And above it, because of the cold of space, you're going to have a blanket of uh, ice. So you've got a big, thick layer of blanket, blanketing ice, protecting the water. Now ice, of course, doesn't have salt in it. So that's fresh water up there. All the salt is in this bit down here, and it's that bit that is going to contain the life. Now, does it contain life? The key is to use ATP, adenosine triphosphate. If you want to know if there are bacteria in the fuel tanks of the jetliner, you get people testing for ATP because the bacteria reveal their presence with ATP. And so we test for ATP. And in this section, it's full of ATP. Not only that, you've got many other chemicals which indicate the, uh, the presence of life. <clears throat> now, below it, you've got the area that's producing all the heat. So you've got an a atomic reactor, if you like, in slow motion. And the telltale signs of an atomic reactor in slow motion is, first of all, you're going to get helium released. It's going to degrade into lead. There's going to be lead there. There's going to be thorium uh, there. Now, also importantly, there are going to be neutrons flying around. And if there's any nitrogen, the neutrons and the nitrogen are going to combine and produce 
carbon-14. But whilst the, what they call the half-life of your main elements, such as uranium, is measured in billions of years, the half-life of carbon-14 is only a few thousand years. So, if there's any carbon-14 there, it's going to tell you that the whole system is still working. The reactor is still going, it's still producing its neutrons, and it's still producing its carbon-14. And you've guessed it, yes, there's carbon-14 in this layer. So we know that all of this is still working and uh, producing heat. Now, the other thing we know is because there's a lot of life and a lot of activity going on there, there are going to be sedimentary layers down at the bottom here. And we've picked up these sedimentary layers and the chemicals that they contain. And they contain the chemicals that you would anticipate from living activity in the water column above. So we've got all the chemicals uh, in this sedimentary layer telling us that there is life. So we're not dependent on the ATP alone. We've got other evidence telling us that there's a whole mass of living organisms in that uh, water. <clears throat> and then as we um, move out, of course, and I should explain how we uh, determine all these, because we have an actual probe. What we do is <clears throat> we push, this is the outside of the moon, and this is now more or less where the sedimentary layer is there. And we take the magnetic fields out and we then analyze the magnetic field so we find out whether there's calcium there, there's um, sodium, there's nitrogen, all the other things that one's looked for. So with our probe, we can now analyze what's in the sedimentary uh, layers. We can also analyze what's in the water. <coughs> and the other thing, and this is uh, rather interesting, is that materials at different temperatures have their own magnetic field due to the way that the atoms and molecules are moving around as a result of their temperature level, their thermal activity. And if we put that probe right into the center, we pick up the magnetic field out here. Then we move into, uh, from the center, we then move into the um, water, and the bottom of the water near the granite, we get there, and then the temperature drops right down when we get into the ice. So we've got the ice there. So we've got a, a temperature profile from the center of the moon out to the uh, surface of the moon. Now, we're not finished there because the moon, of course, has its own gravity and is going to attract things and there are going to be things buzzing around it. So, if we move out a bit, this is the surface of the moon, so we're moving out into space now, and what we find is that there's a ring of granite moving around. This is just part of the ring, but there's a whole ring right around the moon of chunks of granite. And those chunks of granite have the same signature, chemical signature, as the granite in the moon itself. In other words, they've got high radioactivity, they've got the lead, they've got the thorium um, that one associates with um, uranium gradually decaying over the billions of years. And also with these chunks of granite, we've got a disk or ring of water vapor. So round um, Europa, there's this circle of water vapor and circle of chunks of uh, granite going around it. <clears throat> so by using what we call biolocation, and by biolocation we mean we're using the magnetic sensory system of humans and the techniques that we've developed to go along with it, we're able to take 
an astronomical object such as a moon of Jupiter, create a magnetic hologram of it and analyze it and find out what it's made of and importantly whether there's life in it. And we can now say categorically that Europa contains an ocean full of life and that the central heating system of Europa is driven by an atomic reactor working in slow motion at the center of the moon. Many thanks for listening to me.